Uh, how long have I been out for? Over the past 24 hours, the rage virus, as experts are calling it, what has spread hell? to all corners of the continent. A state of martial law has been declared. There is a strict shelter-in-place lockdown that will be in effect for the next 10 days as authorities attempt to contain the outbreak and try to reinstate law and order. Day 47. What's on the menu today? Ah, uh, peak refuel again. F my life. Well, at least I didn't succumb to the rage virus like these dorks. Wonder what my friends in Tahiti are doing right now. Hmm. What? Oh no, another one got in again, you insatiable sons of bitches. Well, that sure was exhausting. I guess it's time to eat. Coconut chicken curry, let's get to it. All right, let's see if I can get this thing working here. Come on, work, you son of a... If only I had a modest ignition source. What could I use? Oh, this should work. Ha ha. Oh, ah, ah. oh man, that really sucked. Guess it could have been worse. Oh, that's not good. Man, I better find a doctor and some medical supplies ASAP. Let's think happy thoughts. Oh, that's not a happy thought. Man, what am I gonna do? Oh, I gotta phone Dr. Bones. Let's hope the Starlink satellites are still operational. Call Dr. Bones. Oh, what's, what's going on? Oh, yellow. Bones. Bones. Oh, thank God this thing is still working. CP. Old rat-tailed swamp iguana. Where have you been, you handsome devil? We've been waiting for you. We need a fourth for beach volleyball. Yeah, I'm stuck in Canada. This rage virus is kicking our ass up here. Everybody's turned into a zombie. I can't get out of the city. But Doc, look, I got an emergency. I burned my arm and I think it's bad. Oh, I know what you mean. J-Lo and Affleck just moved into the house next door and they are fighting all the time. Boy, does she have a potty mouth. And he's always crying, poor guy. Wait, wait, you burned your arm? Yeah, I was trying to boil water for my peak refuel and oh, it hurts so bad. Ah! Okay, it hurts. That means you still got some sensation in the burned area. That's actually a good thing. Might not be a third degree burn. Sure doesn't feel like a good thing, Bones. What's it look like? Yeah, it's all red and oozing and my arm is covered in blisters. What should I do? All right, that sounds like a second degree or partial thickness burn. Do you have any clean running water where you're at? The running water stopped flowing a few weeks ago, but we still do have some water stored, yeah. Okay, run some water over the injury for about 10 to 15 minutes. Gotcha. Hey, I got some ice from an old freezer. Is that gonna help? No, that's just gonna traumatize the already damaged skin. After running some water over it, pat it dry. <sighs> hey, can I keep it covered up? Well, that's not a bad idea. Do you have any burn dressings? Looks like I'm out of burn dressings. But I do have some gauze and a can of lard. I've heard that that might work. Is that gonna be helpful? No, lard or butter is just gonna keep the heat in and might worsen the injury. Do you have an aloe plant? Yeah, yeah, I've been actually growing some for this very purpose. Just one sec, let me go and get it. Ah, oh. oh, yeah, this should do the trick. Smart to have some medicinal plants around, CP. Dang, boy, you're sharp as a knife and smarter than you look. Break off a leaf and mash some of the gel onto your gauze, then put that over the burned area. Oh, be sure to remove any rings or wristbands first. There's gonna be swelling. These blisters on my arm are massive. Do you think I should start popping them? Well, I'm guessing that your wound is dirty. Only drain the blisters if they're huge and look like they're gonna pop anyway, or any that fill up with pus. If you have to do it, lance at the side of the thing's base and leave the roof on for protection against infection. The skin looks so damaged. I think I should just pull it off. Don't, don't. It only leaves the new skin underneath vulnerable to infection. It can cause worse scarring. Got some ibuprofen? 
Yeah, I've got an ample supply of uh, 200 milligram ibuprofen in my first aid medical roll. Good, use three or even four of those for pain up to, well, every six to eight hours. The burn should get better in one to three weeks if it's not too deep. If you have antibiotic cream to put on the burn, that might help prevent infection too. So how long should I keep this gauze on here for? Change it daily and see if you can find some non-stick dressings. Believe me, you'll be glad you did. Hey doc, thanks a lot for the help. I really do appreciate it. And I got your survival medicine handbook just in case I have any more problems. But hey, I just wanted to ask you, is there still a spot down there in Tahiti if I can make it out of this hellhole? Yeah, but get your butt over here. Elon keeps bugging me to put in a putting green where I have your tiki hut. CP, you gotta quit messing around in the great white north and come on down to fabulous Tahiti. Garcon, another margarita, please. And two little umbrellas this time. Hi, Joel Nendi here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, the fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, plus designer of quality medical kits at altonfirstaid.com. A wide variety of situations, both in normal times and disaster settings, put us in proximity with high levels of heat. If we're knocked off the grid, it won't be unusual to cook food over a fire of our own making, something very few of us do now on a regular basis. As such, the survival medic often will be faced with burn injuries. Having the materials and knowledge to treat burns will be absolutely necessary in times of trouble. Burns can be caused by contact with sources other than flames, including scalds due to contact with hot water or steam, contact with electricity associated with, I don't know, lightning or other another source, friction burns due to contact with hard surfaces such as roads, road rash, carpets or hard flooring, skin exposure to extreme cold and winds, yes, extreme cold can cause burns, chemical spills, and radiation due to contact with energy emitted by x-rays and other medical testing or treatment. Also, dirty bombs, thermonuclear explosions, gosh, well, obviously, that radiation will cause burns too. In general, the different types of burns are treated similarly, but some burns, like those caused by electricity or radiation, can cause internal damage without destroying the skin. For example, inhalation of superheated air may cause damage to lung tissue. Off the grid, the lack of advanced care will make these cases a true challenge for the medic. The severity of a burn injury and resulting chance of death or disability depends in part on the percentage of the total body surface involved, as measured by the rule of nines. Assessing the percentage of body surface area burned is standard practice and helpful in modern medicine. It may, however, have less practical benefit in austere settings where transport to a burn unit is not an option. In any case, knowing the rule of nines gives the medic an idea of the chances for recovery of a particular burn victim. Burns to the face, feet, hands, genitals, and lungs are considered the most problematic. Besides total surface area involved, an important factor is the depth of penetration of the burn. This is usually measured in degrees. Most burns you'll see will be due to excessive exposure to the sun. The more majority of them will be first degree burns. In first degree burns, the patient may be red as a lobster, but only the superficial layer of the skin called the epidermis is injured. Besides redness, a first degree burn will feel warm and dry. It'll be painful to the touch, especially when large areas of skin are involved. You may have experienced this yourself. Fortunately, major complications are rare. Treatment is simply focused on relieving the discomfort. Immersion in a cool bath will be helpful, at, at the very least. You should run cool water over the injury. A cool moist cloth on the burn for 20 minutes will give some relief as well. So will anti-inflammatory medicines such as ibuprofen. Aloe vera, zinc oxide, and benzocaine sprays are effective alternatives. Expect the discomfort to continue but improve after about 24 hours. Until then, avoid constrictive tight clothing and wear light fabrics such as cotton. Prevention, of course, is worth a pound of cure. To avoid this type of burn, don't sunbathe. A tan is not healthy. Avoid being outside during peak sun hours. Wear long pants and sleeves, hats and sunglasses when you're in the sun, and spend time in the shade whenever possible. If extended exposure to sunlight is unavoidable, be certain to use a sunblock. Apply 15 minutes prior to going outside and reapply frequently during the day. Even water-resistant sunscreen should be reapplied every one to two hours. Most people fail to put enough on and put it on frequently enough, so be sure to use plenty. 
The SPF rating, you may have seen that, it's called the sun protection factor, was developed in 1962 to measure the capacity of a product to protect against UV radiation. It measures the length of exposure to the sun before you burn. An SPF factor of at least 15 is recommended. The higher the number, the longer it takes for the skin to burn. Without sunscreen, it takes about 20 minutes for your skin to start turning red. SPF 15 blocks 94% of the sun's rays. SPF 30 blocks 97%. SPF 45, 98%. Although the increase in protection may seem small, higher SPF numbers are especially benefit to those with fair skin. Besides the sun, first degree injuries will most likely be related to cooking or campfires. Using hand protection will prevent many of these burns, as will careful supervision of children near campfires that are always fascinated by them, and food preparation areas. Second degree burns are deeper injuries that penetrate through the superficial epidermis and partially through the deeper layer of the skin called the dermis. Thus, they're often called partial thickness burns. While first degree burns may cover a large percentage of surface area without becoming life-threatening, a smaller percentage of the body covered with significant second degree burns may require a serious medical intervention. Unlike first degree burns, which appear dry, second degree burns will be moist in appearance and often have blisters with reddened bases. The area will have a tendency to weep clear or even whitish fluid. Second degree burns will cause swelling as well, so it's important to remove jewelry like rings and bracelets immediately. To treat second degree burns, remove the victim from the heat source immediately. Run cool water over the injury for about 10 to 15 minutes. Avoid ice, however, which will traumatize already damaged skin. After running water over the wound, pat the area dry. The next step is to apply moist skin dressings such as Xeriform, Second Skin, or non-stick dressings with layers of products like aloe vera, Silvadine, or Aquaphor. Be sure to replace these regularly and review the process of the healing. Other actions should include elevating burned extremities, applying cool but not cold compresses, giving oral pain relief such as ibuprofen, Advil or Motrin, applying anesthetic creams such as benzocaine or lidocaine, protecting adjacent burned fingers and toes with a dry barrier in between, encouraging hydration is also very, very important. It's also important to avoid peeling burned skin from a second degree burn as it sometimes comes off in sheets leaving even more raw tissue exposed. I experienced this myself as a kid when well-meaning parents peeled off about a foot of it off my back. Believe me, it wasn't fun healing from that. If the patient is having problems sleeping, use a product called a blanket lifter or improvise one to keep sheets above extensive and painful burns. We're often asked whether the pop blister is associated with second degree burns. It's wisest to avoid the lancing of blisters if possible unless they're infected and filled with pus. Some very large blisters, however, will break with the slightest pressure and may benefit from a controlled drainage. If this is the case, use a sterilized needle or scalpel blade to pierce the side of the blister near the base. The roof of the blister is often retained to provide additional protection to the healing skin beneath. It's important to use sterile saline solution to keep the burn area and nonstick dressings moist, especially in more severe second degree burns. Hi, Amy Alton here. I just want to talk a little bit about first and second degree burns. And I want you to remember it's important to avoid the use of lard or butter on burns. They actually tend to keep in the heat and worsen the injury. Also, don't use egg whites or toothpaste, which were long considered to be home remedies these may also increase the risk of infection so definitely don't use any of those it's actually better to use sterile saline solution to keep the burn area moist and use non-stick dressings sometimes they're called non-adherent and what's unique about these is they actually have a shiny side to them and what happens is that prevents the healing tissue from adhering to the dressing. I wanna just show you regular gauze. See, it has a woven texture. What happens is the healing skin can actually attach to this, and when you remove that from the burn area, you're going to remove some of the skin. So it's much better to use these non-adherent pads. If your only choice is to use a woven gauze pad, and definitely use sterile because you don't want to increase the risk of infection. You're going to want to put one of these treatments on there so that there is a layer between the skin that's healing and the gauze. And some of those great treatments you might want to use, and my number one would be raw honey. And I have some examples of some raw honey. 
We've gotten these in different locations. I kind of collect honey when we travel around. I, I love honey, and so I like to taste the different flavors from the places we visit. And so what you want to do is you want to put some of the raw honey directly on the gauze, and then you're going to cover the burn with that. Now to hold that on, we have some various products here. I have some roller gauze. I have a triangular bandage, uh, ace bandage. Um, I cut up some just plain cotton material. Remember, these don't have to be sterile, just clean, because they're not coming in direct contact with the wound. What's important to be sterile is what's coming in direct contact with the wound. So you want your gauzes to be sterile. You can also hold it on with some compressed gauze. I have Coban, this has a sticky side. Um, another really important thing about what you're covering the gauze with is don't make it too tight. This is not something that you need compression. If you had a hurt ankle, a swollen ankle, something that was dislocated, something you needed compression, then you would wanna put these on a little tighter. This is really just a loose gauze, a loose covering to keep it in place so it doesn't dislodge, but you're not trying to compress the area. Some other things you can use are burn gels. This has some lidocaine in it, which helps with pain. One of the top treatments for burns, especially second degrees that are blistery or open, is aloe vera and I cut this out of our garden you can see it has a, a gel and it's just perfect it causes a little bit of cooling sensation and it does help heal wounds so if you can get some aloe vera you can possibly grow it in your house that is wonderful second degree burns again with the blisters require some covering but if you have first degree you don't really need to do that what you need to do is make the patient comfortable Witch hazel helps to cool off the uncomfortable burning sensation. You can use uh, baking soda compresses. Again, we're not really covering these so much with gauze. We're allowing them to breathe, but you want to take away that burning sensation. Vinegar is a time-honored treatment. You can put this in a bath, do a vinegar bath. You can mix it with water. White vinegar is fine, apple cider is fine. Another thing my mom would do was put the vinegar in some water, usually like a 50-50 dilution or maybe 30% vinegar, 70% water, and soak a t-shirt in it. If I had a sunburn on my back and my arms and, or my chest area, this would be really helpful. You can sleep in it. It doesn't smell great. You're gonna smell a little bit like a salad, but vinegar is very cooling. It still allows the burn area to breathe and to heal fine. So vinegar is actually one of the best things for a first degree burn. You can also use tea. You can make a concoction with tea leaves and then mix that with some water and use some compresses. You could also soak that t-shirt in uh, the tea and then wear that. Again, we're just talking about drawing the heat away from the first degree. It's more about comfort. This is gonna heal very easily. You don't have to do anything special. Some other things I have here are an irrigation syringe. You wanna make sure that you're irrigating second degree wounds with sterile water if possible, the cleanest, most sterile water you can get. Again, we're trying to decrease infection rates because you have an open wound. We have some scissors here to, again, cut some of this gauze or to cut a piece of your aloe, and those are really helpful. Another thing that's helpful is petroleum jelly. And again, you're gonna put a, a bunch of the petroleum jelly on your nonstick gauze, cover this second degree burn, keep it from getting infected. Petroleum jelly is known to be a great healing product for second degree burns. If you have third degree burns, you're a little limited on what you can do. All of those should be in a hospital, but if I had no choice, I would be using raw honey in my third degree burns. This is Amy Alton, and thank you for watching, and we're gonna go back to Dr. Alton. Thanks so much. Third degree burns, those that go completely through both the dermis and epidermis, well, they're another critter altogether. I'm running long here, so for more information on those, check out our website at doomandbloom.net. Hey, would you like to experience the joy that comes with helping the elderly? Well, you can help this elderly guy by checking out our entire line of quality medical kits at altonfirstaid.com. Thanks again.
The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high-quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.